Hi there, in this video we're going to be talking about how we go about estimating the population variance given that we only have a sample from that population. And in doing so we're going to cover something which in statistics is known as Bessel's correction. Okay, so what are we trying to do? The idea is that there is some sort of population and that population has some sort of population process whereby if I was to pick an individual I from that population then their sort of value of a variable x was equal to, or would be equal to, the population mean mu, plus some sort of idiosyncratic error, epsilon i, um, where epsilon i is, let's say, normally distributed with mean zero and variance sigma squared. So the idea here is that we only have a sample from that population, and we're trying to sort of use some sort of mathematical tool on that sample to essentially gauge, first of all, what the population mean is, and secondly, try and estimate what the population variance is. So a sort of relatively intuitive thing to do to sort of form an estimate of the population mean would be to calculate the sample mean. So the sample mean x bar would just be equal to 1 over n times the sum of i equals 1 to n, where I'm sort of summing over all points in my sample, times xi. And if I take the expectations of both sides of this thing, well then I get the expectation of x bar is equal to 1 over n times the sum from i equals 1 to n of the expectation of xi. And we know from the sort of population process that the expectation of xi is just going to be equal to mu because the expectation of this sort of idiosyncratic error epsilon i is in general zero. So when I sort of evaluate this, I get 1 over n times, well, I get n times mu on the top. So I get finally that the expectation of x bar, the expectation of the sample mean, is the population mean. So the sample mean itself is an unbiased estimator of the population mean. So how do we go about estimating this second parameter from the population? So this variance of the error term. Well, sort of on the back of what we did to form a uh, estimator of the population mean, well, perhaps a sensible thing to do would be to say, well, let's form some sort of estimator which we're going to call sigma tilde square, which is equal to 1 over n times the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi minus x bar, all squared. In other words, let's just estimate our uh, population variance by using the sample variance. And on sort of first glance, that seems like quite a sensible thing to do. Um, but if I sort of expand sigma tilde squared, well, then we can write it as sort of 1 over n times x1 minus x bar all squared plus x2 minus x bar all squared um, plus, and we sort of continue all the way up to we finally have sort of xn minus x bar all squared. And we might sort of think then if we were to sort of take expectations of both sides, then we would get something like the expectation of sigma tilde squared is equal to 1 over n times, well, you sort of think that this first term here might contribute sigma squared. Um, I mean, this is a sort of intuition for what's going on. I'm not sort of deriving this perfectly mathematically, but the intuition is kind of right. So we can sort of think about this first term as um, contributing sigma squared to our um, expectation the second term we can sort of think about as contributing sigma squared. And you might sort of think that we continue all the way up to sort of sigma and we get this sort of last term contributing sigma squared as well. But the problem is that we have actually used up all of our degrees of freedom by the time we get to this last term. Because we know what the sample mean is, this last term here isn't free to vary at all. And because it's not free to vary, it contributes zero to the variance. So actually, this last term contributes absolutely nothing. So if we were to sort of um, then sort of add this all up, then we get that the expectation of sigma tilde squared is in fact equal to n minus 1 over n times sigma squared. And in general, this doesn't equal sigma squared. So we would conclude that sigma tilde squared is in fact a bias estimator of the population variance. It's a bias estimator, but it is, in fact, a consistent estimator because as n tends to infinity, n minus 1 over n tends to 1, which means that the expectation of 
sort of sigma tilde squared tends to um, sigma squared. So in that sense, it's a consistent estimator. But we want to try and form an unbiased estimator for the um, population variance. So how do we do that? Well, it's quite simple, really. We've um, sort of derived this form for si the expectation of sigma tilde squared. And that's quite similar to sigma squared. All we need to do is we need to form some sort of new estimator, which I'm going to call sigma hat squared, which is equal to n over n minus 1 times um, sigma tilde squared. And then it's quite easy to see that the sort of expectation of this new estimator, uh, which we're going to call, uh, which we've called sigma hat squared, is in fact equal to sigma squared because it's just sort of n, if you sort of think about this term here, it's just n over n minus 1 times this, and the n cancels with that n, and the n minus 1 cancels with that n minus 1. So the expectation of our sort of new estimator sigma hat squared is in fact sigma squared. It seems quite counterintuitive, um, actually, when we're forming our new estimator to instead of divide the sort of um, this sum in terms of xi minus xi um, x bar by n to divide it by n minus 1. So this is our sort of new estimator. Um, in the next video, we're going to talk about another way that we could sort of derive this sort of unintuitive result here. Um, and I should note, I should mention actually that this um, sort of n over n minus 1, which we meant multiply sigma tilde squared, is in fact known as Bessel's correction because it's a way of correcting our sort of sample variance um, to take into account that sigma tilde squared is in fact a um, biased estimator of the population variance. But as I say, in the next video, we're going to talk about a sort of another way we could just sort of think about, uh, about the intuition behind um, this particular result.